Um, so we talked about earlier today, Aaron, as we were just preparing, like, you know, just getting to the back to basics a little bit, talking about, you know, what is the mind? And uh, you had brought to the conversation the, um, the law of one and about the mind body spirit complex. So you want to introduce that to some of us who don't, who are uh, related to that? Yeah, if, uh, if you're familiar with the law of one, then you know that uh, Ra likes to describe um, us, people, a person as a mind body spirit complex. Now, from their level of awareness, they see us as a complex of three portions or a trinity of three portions, we might say. And um, if we start with spirit, you know, we are eternal spirit or energy. Uh, that spirit can't know itself in any way without a mind. A mind is like its reflection, tool of reflection, right? Thoughts, feelings, emotions, all that. Um, the ability to localize awareness into a point in time and space needs a mind. And then likewise, a mind also can't actually know itself without a physical form or a body to operate in time and space and have other reflections of three-dimensionality and whatnot. So the three elements are dependent upon one another. And we really see that also, you know, reflected in the, the Trinity of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so, um, yeah, do we want to get into the definition of mind? Yeah, please. Right? Yeah. yeah. So as Mark was saying, we were talking about, you know, what's, how do we define what a mind is? And um, I believe the course, it might be the law of one, but I think it's the course defines um, the mind is the activating agent for the spirit. And the body is likewise the activating agent for the mind, sort of as we just said. Mm -hmm. And so I think a really good analogy to understand the mind is through that of a tree. So if we first imagine, you know, the soil or the dirt, um, you know, a soil would represent pure consciousness in that it's just kind of infinite possibilities, right? Whatever you plant into it, whatever seeds you sow, it's going to grow. It doesn't differentiate, doesn't have a bias. It'll grow whatever you plant in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the mind is a lot like a tree in that a tree has sort of two parts. Underneath the soil is the root system where all the nutrients get fed in. The structure of the tree is built. <clears throat> and then out of those roots grow the actual tree above the surface. And so we can kind of see in this example how the, uh, the root system of the tree would represent the feminine or the subconscious part of the mind, that which we don't have conscious awareness of, but nevertheless is kind of the source of everything that's happening above the surface. Mm -hmm. And the conscious mind is the masculine principle of the tree, the part we see. And so there's just so much richness to this analogy, um, the conscious, the subconscious. But I think, you know, the first place to go is that the conscious mind, the tree uh, above the surface represents what we think about, what we're aware of in the conscious mind. But actually every thought that happens in the conscious mind, as we know, finds its origin in a belief in the roots of the tree of the subconscious mind. So really the, the conscious mind only thinks whatever the subconscious mind holds in its belief system. And so this is sort of where the ego comes in and doesn't understand its actual origin is the unconscious. And it thinks it's in charge of all the thoughts it's thinking. I'm the doer. I'm the thinker. It's just me out here. <laughs> and uh, Mark and I were kind of riffing on this idea of how uh, the ego quite literally misses the forest for the trees because it thinks it's a separate tree, right? It's an individual isolated tree and it's different from all the other trees. Whereas we know through science that trees, especially like in a forest, um, it's really one giant network of intelligence underneath the surface. All of the root systems of all the other trees are connected with one another. And the amazing part about trees, and maybe some of you didn't know this, is that if one tree uh, is deficient in nutrients for some reason, the other trees, it can send a signal out to the forest through the, like the mycelium or whatever underneath the soil and other trees can send it nutrients. So really all the trees minds are joined in that sense. And they work together in harmony and in unity. 
And, you know, as Mark and I were discussing this morning, it's the same exact thing with our minds. When we say all minds are joined, this is what we mean. It's impossible for me to separate myself from somebody else without attacking myself. Like I bear the consequences of that. And the more separate I think I am, you know, I, I believe I'm a tree and not the forest. Uh, the more I'm going to suffer at the hands of that belief, right? Yeah. 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 It's a good analogy. And let's take it a little further for a minute, you know, join us in thinking about it for a minute, you know, back to the idea that, so the ego says, I'm not going to be a part of this forest. I'm better than this forest, or I want this forest <laughs> to worship me. I want to be a special tree in the forest. I want to be a special tree. I want to be a special tree. And, and so it pushes away and it rejects and it competes and it's always measuring and saying, oh, that tree is a little taller than me. And, you know, so it's, I mean, that's yep. crazy, right? Because a tree doesn't have the experience of the ego, but still to use that as a thought, to look at that, um, the tree has the blessing of not having that. And so it's just a part of the beautiful forest and it doesn't say, oh, why am I a part of this forest? Why can't I be unique? Why can't I stand alone? It actually lives as a part of it. It makes it more beautiful. It contributes to it. It adds to it exactly the way it's supposed to. It never yeah. wishes to be a flower. It never wishes to be anything other than what it is. It's a natural expression of life. And it's very beautiful yeah. in its acceptance of it. And I just, I point to that to say, that is what our spirit is. Our spirit is not competing. Our spirit is in joyous communion and harmony with, with the underground root system of, of the one. Being a part of it is very nourishing for our spirit. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that example in the tree. The above the surface portion is like the body, the ego. I'm the body. I'm just the tree. But yeah. really underneath is the root system of the mind, the tree of mind. And then the forest itself is the spirit. And we are all that one spirit um, expressing itself, appearing as different bodies, just like a tree is just the forest appearing as different trees. Yeah. And, you know, the trees don't have egos, so they know this and they don't ever question that fact. But what it means, essentially, using this analogy to say that the ego misses the forest for the trees is to say the ego misses the Christ for other bodies. It only sees bodies and doesn't see the Christ as one would only see trees and not realize you're actually in a forest. Like the forest is the real entity. Yeah. And the trees are just an expression of that entity. So it is with the Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to dive into another way to, we'll get back to this analogy, but for a moment to, to dive in, like, if we will, to take, look at the root system for a moment, to look at the subconscious mind, a way to think about that is that the subconscious mind contains all thoughts that have ever been thought, all beliefs that have ever, that, that exist. Now you individually don't resonate with every single thought in the mind. You resonate with the thoughts that you are in agreement with. You resonate with right. thoughts that your beliefs vibrate with, but still there's this field of thought and the suffering comes when we identify ourselves with these thoughts and we mm -hmm. believe that we are this. Now it's basic, but you know, back to basics for a minute to really take a look at this. You know, Buddha, he became enlightened because he became declutched from the mind, meaning that he was freed from thinking that he was the thoughts. And suddenly the thoughts came and went like clouds passing by. He had no attachment to them whatsoever. And he awakened because the thoughts no longer captured him and he no longer, um, he was neutral in, in, in their passing by. He was then naturally identified with the Christ mind. He didn't have to do yeah. anything. He didn't have to do anything to get there. He just had to become free from what he thought he was. And then the yeah. natural expression of oneness in the Christ mind was immediately activated within him. It's just a good story because that's really, you know, it's an example of clutch to the mind, declutch to the mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the dawning of a higher intelligence, you know, within you, 
we're, what awareness really is, is intelligence. And awareness isn't stuck anywhere. It's not stuck in a body or stuck on thoughts. Right. Uh, it just gets, you know, enraptured by them and thinks and identifies with them. But as higher intelligence dawns within us, awakening, awareness is able to declutch itself, as you said, and realize, oh, wait a second, I'm actually not those thoughts. Those are also just objects that I'm observing. Yes. And that's what we call the Buddha mind or the Christ mind. And in that mind, it's easy to recognize once you're detangled from thoughts and identifying with them, it's easy to recognize everyone, everywhere, everything all the time is the Christ. There's yeah. only that. It's just one energy knowing itself. It's very obvious when I'm not identified with a form. So not missing the forest for the trees. Yeah, yeah. And that is obviously what the course is about. The course is about declutching us, detangling, getting yeah. us disconnected from thinking that we are these thoughts. And that's the ego's game. That's what the ego wants. But as we keep releasing that and we keep surrendering that in the mind, again, we just rise up in the natural love and our ability to create which is what we are. We're divine creators created to create. Our ability to do that becomes so unencumbered. It's like a clear runway of yeah. divine, brilliant thought of love. Use me into manifestation, into experience. The problem with the mind that is cluttered, the subconscious world that is cluttered with otherness and fear and doubt and and jealousy and, and not enoughness, if that's what's growing on, you know, in the root system of, of your subconscious mind, you have a divine idea, you have a loving thought and imagine it flowing through the root system and it gets dirty and tangled and messed up. And then by the time it comes into form and experience, it like kind of plops out broken <laughs> half right. or not at right. all because it gets stuck and stunted. And that is, that is the suffering of the mind that is filled with, um, with garbage. I can't think of a better word yeah. in this moment. Yeah. So. Egoic thoughts, basically. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we kind of go back to that verse where Christ said, um, if you make a tree good, its fruit will be good, which is really to say if the roots are good, you know, the tree and the branches and the fruit that it bears will also be good. And um, did a few a, a video a few weeks ago on this verse. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears good fruit, he prunes that it can bear more good fruit. And every branch in me that does not bear good fruit, he cuts off so that it can wither away. Yeah. And so this also leads us to another really great insight through the tree analogy of why you know, guilt is such a weapon for the ego to keep us in a state of spiritual sickness and toxicity because guilt keeps in all those toxic thoughts and beliefs and doesn't allow them to express. Right. Yeah. And if, if we are that tree, you know, all we can do is surrender. Like we don't have control over any of these things. We're just a product of the environment of the forest that we're in. And so if there is negative thinking, toxic beliefs within us, we have to let them express so that the vine dresser can see them and cut them off and say, you know, this is out of alignment with your true nature. And if we suppress those out of guilt, we can't show the creator what needs to be cut off, right? What needs to be healed within us. And so uh, we see why ego needs to keep us in a state of guilt, identifying with the body, the doer, I'm this person, shame on me, I've done so many bad things because that way we're not actually allowing those to be released back to God, like a tree would release them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's one way, you know, to sort of shield it because we're, you know, we're, we're believing we are that guilt. And so we're hiding it, um, you know, keeping it, keep it separate. Another way that we don't let it go to God or for the Holy spirit to prune it and free us from it is again, we actually kind of, we become identified with it. We kind of fall in love with it. We're like, you know, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's sickness, but it's my sickness. Like we build an identity. It's familiar. It's familiar. It's my, it's my sickness. And, and <laughs> they become well acquainted. Right. And, and I'm not letting it go. Yeah. I'm not letting, you know, the, the, the divine love of our being do what it does. Or what are you calling it? The divine or not the divine, what do you call it? The divine pruner or something? What did you say? Oh, the vine dresser. The divine dresser. I love that. Yeah. 
we're not, if we are romancing this, we're not letting the divine dresser take right. it and, and dissolve it for us. So, yeah. Um, you know, and as the course teaches, as we start with, you know, all minds are joined. There's one mind. So all thoughts, all of us are in one mind. So when we have a loving, a healing thought, when we think these thoughts of healing for ourselves or for another, then that becomes a gift we give to another. Because remember, sickness exists in the mind. That is where it actually lives. It's in the root yeah. system, if you will. Yes. It outpictures in the branches. But the core of it, as you pointed out, Aaron, earlier, is in the root system. It's in the mind. Yeah. And, and that's where we share our healing. That's where we can serve our brothers by knowing their truth, their wholeness, their vitality, their oneness with the divine. And of course, as we give that to our brothers in thought, we ourselves are the recipient of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I know. Thank God there's one mind and we're all there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. What else on this topic before we move into a little experience for everybody? Well, should we read our uh, passage here? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's a very good passage. Text page 356 of the course uh, reading material it says only minds can really join and whom God has joined, no man can put asunder. It is, however, only at the level of Christ mind that true union is possible and has, in fact, never been lost. Like the tree that thinks it's a separate tree and misses the forest. Was it ever not the forest, though? <laughs> No, it always was true, right? Yeah. The little eye seeks to enhance itself by external approval, external possessions, and external love. The self that God created needs nothing. It is forever complete, safe, loved, and loving. It seeks to share rather than to get, to extend rather than to project. It has no needs and wants to join with others out of their mutual awareness of abundance. And so that uh, sparked for me also, maybe one last analogy for the tree is that if a tree bears good fruit, you know, we call that like the gifts of God, right? They flow out of us when we're in that state of alignment with the Christ and fruits, as we know, are, are blessings to the whole environment. Uh, fruits, you know, animals eat them, people eat them. And then the seeds within the fruits create more trees, plant more trees. It's this life-giving abundance, this gift that the tree gives that everyone gets to share in. And it's just such a perfect analogy for how we become when we really radiate that Christ mind. It's like, we just bless everyone we come in contact with. And whether we're aware of it or not, our very presence and energy will awaken that Christ within others as well.